One of my favorite spots to hunt is a morning stand. And I go to a lot of client properties, and I think Dylan would agree, there's a lot of clients we go to that just don't have a lot of morning stands. And I think a lot of times hunters don't understand what it takes for a morning stand. They're always focusing on food. I mean, heck, even in the UP of Michigan where I lived for a long time, there's a huge percentage of the hunters that in the past would hunt with bait. And I know in some of those areas it's illegal now, and they've, they've uh, outlawed it. But if you're hunting bait, I went to deer camps, just visited there, had friends there, neighbors down the road, where they would all go out, they'd have a giant breakfast, 11 or 12 o'clock brunch, and then they'd go out to hunt about two, sit until dark at six, and then have fun all night, repeat, sleep in. And uh, it was because if they're going into hunting their bait piles, and they all were, then uh, if you went in there in the morning, you're spooking deer off and, uh, and you, you couldn't hunt it. They wouldn't come back that night. So it's a really tough one. So developing morning stands is critical. Critical for, critical for my success personally. I'd say about 70% of the bucks I shoot are shot in the morning. Um, this, this year was no exception. This last year, my uh, Minnesota buck during gun season. You know, the gun season in Minnesota is during the rut. It's early November, so shot buck down at the top, the bottom of this hollow right here. Shot him with uh, my bow about the third, fourth day of gun season, and that was in the morning. Now, I'm always looking for developing these morning spots, but what is a morning spot? The morning spot is back by bedding areas, backside of bedding area, between bedding areas. And so what I like looking for, even though I was hunting on public land, I want to look at where are these deer feeding? And it might be an oak flat on public land, uh, a uh, clear cut area uh, full of regeneration and browse, even if that's too thick. Like I get down to Southern Ohio, some of those clear cuts are too thick for deer to move through, especially a big old buck with big wide antlers moving through this brush, but they're feeding in this location or around it. And then they're going back to a bedding area somewhere. Now, when deer are starting to cruise or when you're getting back between bedding areas that are layered, for example, we have big, big food right over here. Then we have bedding, we have bedding right here. Then we have bedding over there. And then we have food up there, big food on the other side of this bedding. So I hope it makes sense. You're getting in between these bedding areas, these innermost bedding areas. And I'm looking specifically, one of the, my major sources of morning area hunting is to locate myself between high quality bedding areas, especially bedding areas that are away from food sources. Those bedding areas by food sources, it's not that it's, a bad spot to hunt in those locations, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times you're coming in so close to the food that you spook out the bedding area, which is the doe family groups up against the food. So we're approximately 100 yards away from this food. We're about 200 yards straight as a crow flies, which is a long ways in these parts because they go up and down the hills from the major food source this way. So we're getting in, in between the sweet spot. Now we have bedding over here. It's kind of a side bedding point. So getting in between a lot of bedding, now that bedding, if you're in swamp country, that could be that you're locating on a funnel in the swamp. That's where I used to hunt a lot of public land with my gun in the UP of Michigan. I'd get back on small constrictions through the swamp where you might have a hardwoods on the north and south side, two miles away, a mile and a half apart from each other. And then you had all these dots of swamp highland that connected going through a marsh. And I'd walk in and hunt that funnel of movement between the two not even hunting food, just purely hunting between those bedding areas because I was looking for deer that were moving around during the daylight hours that didn't want to be by the bait piles somewhere else closer to other hunters and concentrations of hunters. It might be that you're on the inside corner of a field where you have a big inside corner of a giant field and bow, deer move like a bow tie, meaning there'll be an X of movement coming across in the inside corner so that that corner represents you sit in the corner, you blow your scent out to the field, you're on the inside corner of that field, deer move back and forth, creating a bedding area on one side of that, creating a bedding area, bedding area on the other side. So that maybe creating an area, you have three bedding areas, they're all around the side, one in the middle, but you're getting in between those bedding areas. Bottom line is to move between those inside corners. So I'm looking for a spot where we're going to set up between bedding areas and then I can dictate exactly where I blow my wind. In this case, we have created bedding areas right behind Dylan, up on the point right here, and then right behind him on the flat. So a big bedding area and concentration of bedding area, bedding. And we even have on the big food plot, the big food plot's probably about 400 yards from here, 300 yards, but against that big food plot, we'll have switchgrass that's planted this year, our northern switchgrass blend, and then we'll have 
hardwood regeneration cuttings on the edge of that, that uh, food plot so that we can bed does and fawns right up against the food. And that leaves this space for bucks. We also have the bedding area down at the bottom here. And then we have bedding area around the corner on the side. We also have a water hole stand that's right around the corner over here. So we have a lot going on between water and this constriction point right here behind Dillon is, is a really cool constriction. You see we're on an old two track. We haven't even used this two track for actually driving on for many years. But it really narrows down right here. And then if you look down this draw, it's a ditch. It's very, very steep on the sides. They don't cross this ditch very often. And then it gets even worse down here. Where we get into this ditch, it's even steeper on the sides and it's more constricted, it's washed out. We can't actually even take a machine through this right here because it's so washed out. So we're hunting a constriction anyways, and that's what I'm looking for. Obviously there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat when it comes between bedding areas and hunting between bedding areas. Mixing all those food sources in, water hole, but you're looking for that constriction between those bedding areas. Like I talk about that funnel in the swamp, the inside corner. In this case, we have the ravine that goes down and we have two ditch ditches right here. Well, this is a nice flat spot crossing through right here. Where I'm actually standing right now, Dylan and I have discussed this and we have a couple different options, but I really like that this branch is right above me coming out. It's actually a tree that's trying to get some sun. I'm gonna cut off the end and then I'll locate a scrape right on this flat. It's right on this hump right here, right between these two constrictions. There's a really nice shag bar kickery. It's probably a 12 to 14 inch diameter tree at the base that's right behind Dylan. You can see it right up there. And it seems out in the open a little bit, but there's a lot of giant trunks behind it. What I like about that is those giant trunks will hide our silhouette. And so specifically looking when you're, when you're scouting on public land this year, in this case, as we're building bedding areas on the land, I don't want, for one thing, to find a natural constriction like this. It's full of deer movement and it's already constricting the way deer move through this hillside. And I want to put a bedding area right here. So if you have the option on private land, when we design properties, we're trying to match our improvements to someone's land that we're looking at as a client, whether it's Dylan, Joe, or Kevin or I, looking at this and saying, you know what, this is a natural constriction. What can we do to enhance the movement through here? Enhancing the movement is adding a mock scrape. There's a water hole around the corner on another stand for another set of winds. There's a big bedding area over here, a couple different bedding areas created, a few different bedding areas created over here, and we're just hunting this movement right in between. Now, if this was wide open, and I didn't think there'd be a lot of deer moving, I might cut some of these trees down here to let sunlight in and thicken it up. I might even hinge cut a couple downhill so that we're getting sunlight into this location and it gives deer browse. But I'm fairly, fairly confident in this area, and you can kind of see when we go back this way, you can see all the sunlight that's starting to come in. You can see our cuttings down below. You can see a lot of the briars that are popping up. So we already have a lot of regeneration taking place in the area. We've created a lot more. So a couple things again, looking for this natural constriction in between bedding areas. You can find it on public land, those swamp funnels, those inside corners, whatever it might be. It might even be the inside corner of a giant clear cut where it's open clear cut, it hasn't quite filled in yet. You know deer are gonna be bumped around it. You're looking for a spot where they're, you have that inside corner, where this is the inside corner of a field, they're gonna move this way along the edge, this way along the edge, and that makes an X of movement right there. Might be there's bedding areas on both sides of that inside corner. But even more specifically, on private land, when you're creating this movement, looking for this outstanding morning hunting opportunity, you're making sure you don't improve this so much that you're sitting deer right here and bedding. You can't get out of your stand or you can't get in your stand in the morning. And this is a morning stand location, morning great setup because it's between all of this X and movement where we're not coming into food. We have a stand right up there. We'll actually have a redneck blind right next to that food source. That's an afternoon evening hunt. We can't walk in next to that food without potentially spooking deer. We get in this area, it's too large a bedding. We could probably get into the backside if we came in from the bottom. We're not going to do so because it's fairly risky and too close to food. 
So we're coming into an area that is well away from food that gives that makes it the perfect morning stand. You know what's cool about this? That shag bark hickory, where my head's at right here, looking at that hickory, my head is below the level or around that level of the base of the tree. That means in about 16 yards, we figured Dylan, it's, you know, right around there, it's already dropping about five feet in elevation and then it steeply drops off on this side. That means if I have a wind that's directly north to even moving over this side a little bit, so where it'd be a little bit northeast, I could actually hunt this stand in the morning because the morning thermals are gonna, I'm gonna blow that out with wind at my back and it's gonna blow right out over these deer and hit that ridge on the other side up high. The deer will never smell me in this location. So I get a double movement in a location like this with the elevation change where I can blow my scent down here in the morning or in the afternoon, evening, I can blow it uphill. Morning, I can blow it uphill too. So we get a lot of movement in here where we can have south winds and north winds, pretty direct, straighter, straight north, and then more of a variety of south winds in the morning. Or in the evening, I can hunt those evening winds in my face with south winds. But I gotta be careful in the evening because of this elevation change. If I have light winds, that scent right there, is gonna spill right back downhill with the thermals because there's not enough constant wind to have the power to continue to push my scent uphill. Bottom line is we're creating a great morning stand that'll double as a very good evening stand. It's between bedding areas. And if you just think finding a funnel, a natural constriction like this, get it between two bedding areas, meaning our bedding area over here starting about 70, 80 yards away in this direction about the same and whether it's on public land and you find that hot spot or on private land and you can create it, it's a great spot for a morning stand and a way that you can add to your morning buck hunting and buck cruising arsenal. And the cool thing about that is bucks move historically about three times more in the morning hours, maybe because of the cool of the day than they do the afternoon hours. So if you find that you're, you're locating great morning stands, you're building these you're going to find that your odds for shooting a mature buck every season go up and you'll find that even though I hunt my morning stands only I would say a third of the time a quarter of the time for the entire hunting season they account for the super majority of all my bucks they can for you too this is one easy morning setup we're planning this it's March 27th right now we're going to get this going I'm actually going to hang a mock scrape right now and, uh, and get this set up because we'll get a camera on here. And it's not that I expect a lot of summer movement in here, but when they do come through here, I want to know that they're going right in front of the stand location. Want to verify that. And I want to see what bucks are going to come through here because I already have a lot of excitement for this stand going into the next hunting season. But you can bet when I capture some of those monsters during the summer in this spot and they hit that licking branch, they'll know about it for fall and we'll be waiting in the morning one fateful cold morning right in that tree right there. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.